Like the Yaku, Kenya's Iltramus Maasai pastoralists are struggling with climate change and environmental degradation in the arid region around Lake Baringo in central Kenya. In the last two years, we've not had the rain, and the, the, the few showers we've had has been so erratic that uh, it can't be enough to sustain a crop or to, to maintain even the rivers. So it is, it is really very bad. And if you go to Lake Baringo right now, there's no fish, the, 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 the grass is very uh, little, and the water is going down, very, very brown, because uh, there's so much mud, because the forests have been cleared. So when it rains, the downpour just takes everything to the lake. Even when you address the issues of climate change, uh, climate warming, something like that, then you should also consider that it has affected us. We cannot even predict when we have rains. Because of this long drought, animals are dying and they continue dying. Many depend on relief food. There are also frequent conflicts over water and pasture because these things are becoming scarce. The Ilchamus also face a huge problem with the exotic weed, Prosopsis juliflora, locally known as Matanga, which was introduced by the UNFAO to stop desertification. The intent was noble, but 20 years down the line, the weed has covered the entire landscape, choking indigenous trees and grasses. Thousands of animals died, hundreds of homesteads vacated. Change of river causes are questioning flooding El Chamus plains. Lake Baringo ecosystem endangered. This weed has caused massive poverty among the El Chamus and the Lafiludes are threatened. Welcome, this is Lake Baringo and this is the tree which is called Madenge. The, the problem of this tree can affect the, the goats of this area and the goats come without teeth. The big issue is whether communities like the Yaku, Ogiak and Samburu will see any real benefits from red and carbon credit trading. The level of awareness of red among the communities is very, very low. All over, in all countries I've been to, communities are not aware about red. Even civil society groups themselves, not many, are aware about red. Even governments are not aware about red. Because of the low awareness, uh, it will end up being implemented in a terrible way. We'll see more deaths, we'll see more uh, suffering, we'll see more disorganization among communities. The consequences will be drastic. So it's time that people must actually stop talking and start working. Red is barely known amongst Africa's forest-based and nomadic peoples. Yet red could become a catalyst, uniting governments with conservation agencies and indigenous peoples in conserving Africa's forests and fighting the effects of global warming. IPAC calls on African states to engage with their forest and nomadic communities. In doing this, they can link indigenous knowledge about adaptation and mitigation with science and technology, and so better the lives of all Africa's peoples. While the international debate drags on, the effects of climate change are now a matter of life and death for indigenous peoples like the Samburu. The rich countries, they will also have to think how will they restore the ozone layer and the global warming, reduce it. I don't know if they have a plan, let them try and secure us. Really 95% of, of our livestock are now under starvation, they are not dying. Maybe after these animals, we are thinking maybe we can follow because we don't have any other way of surviving. We have never experienced this. Now we are, we are alive because of our domestic animals. No any other farm that we can dig. It's only this cow. Is this cow you eat meat? You, you milk? You, get, you take blood out of him? You, eat, you drink blood? That's our life. If all are finished, what shall we have to do? What will we do? What will we do? You die. And that's how it is.
because of all this long drought, their cattle are out, their goats are out, the donkeys. So now they are telling God, don't leave us. Yeah, yeah, yeah.